Remnant from the Ashes concluded with our player character vanquishing the nefarious nightmare controlling the world destroying route, then sailing away into the distance. The ending left a few questions unanswered, such as, did we defeat the route once and for all? And what the Sam Hell was going on in the first place? Subject 2923 aims to address those lingering mysteries, though to mixed effect. The main story is okay at best, but those who've invested in Remnant from the Ashes deep lore will find themselves spoiled with a wealth of new information, especially in the new Ward Prime Zone. Subject 2923 is a separate campaign accessible from the World Stone in Ward 13. From there, they'll be jettisoned off to the Golden Crest Hills, a minor zone that rests outside the fabled Ward Prime. The Gold Crest Hills is a mixed bag. On the one hand, it's intentionally short and is intended to help flesh out the world and lore of the game. The foggy moonlit fields and dilapidated barns and silos stand as a haunting reminder that the root consumed every inch of earth during their conquest. On the other hand, it largely recycles the root enemies from the earth full biome, and there aren't any bosses to speak of. Considering the Gold Crest Hills is more or less here for some good old fashioned scene setting, this isn't a huge concern, but I personally found myself wanting a Corsa style version of this zone. I know I'm being greedy here, but I wouldn't have been upset if the Gold Crest Hills had a little more meat on the bone. The Gold Crest Hills are short because the other two zones are far, far more substantial. Ward Prime doesn't actually feature any enemies to fight, nor a single boss fight. Thing is, Ward Prime is a clever combination of dimension hopping stealth gameplay and lore depository. Fans itching to get back into the action may take issue with Ward Prime, but those invested in the general lore of Remnant from the Ashes will lose their damned minds within its concrete and root infested walls. The entire zone is split into two dimensions, ours and the roots. Players need to traverse between the two and destroy giant progress blocking root cores if they wish to ultimately access the portal to the new biome of Rysum and Subject 2923. But while on the roots are the Ward Prime, they'll need to avoid patrolling nightmares that can't truly be killed and can murder them in short order. The stealth isn't robust by any standard, but a clever assortment of paths allow players an assortment of routes to evade these roaming death plants. All throughout Ward Prime are audio logs, written notes, and eventually computer databases chock full of lore. Fans who wanted to know more about the Dreamer Project and how the route came to overwhelm Earth in the first place will find a host of answers within Ward Prime, as there's easily an hour's worth of lore to dig into. Those looking to get back into the fight can easily ignore it all and clear Ward Prime's labyrinth in under 30 minutes, but story purists will no doubt delight in picking apart all the little secrets left untouched at the end of Remnant from the Ashes. Once players make it through the minor stealth gauntlet and reach the portal within Ward Prime, they'll find themselves within Rysum, which is without a doubt the true star of the show. The icy mountainside biome is a blend of classic Norse design and scavenged earth materials. This design keeps the more generic portions of the design from boring completely, because as lovely as Rysum is, it's a pretty bog standard ice zone. What isn't standard are the rat bastards that populate the place. I mean that quite literally, since your foes in Rysum are actual humanoid rats. They come in all shapes and sizes. Average spindly assholes wielding crossbows and machine guns. Monstrous rats the size of a van with the punch to match and blizzard casting mages that will easily inflict you with the new frostbite status effect. The enemy variety in Rysum is up there with the other major biomes, and while ranged weapon toting baddies are not a new thing, the combination of foes that will assault you at any given moment makes Rysum perhaps Remnant's most challenging zone to survive. Rysum doesn't break new ground in terms of biome design in Remnant, and it doesn't need to. There are a handful of dungeons for the procedural generation to slap onto the edges, and a world boss to overcome before moving on to the second half of Rysum. There's a couple of new faces to meet, and plenty of secrets to chew on, so fans eager for more of Remnant's unique proc gen design will find plenty to love in Rysum, even if the general design flirts with the mundane. Boss battles in Rysum are arguably the best part of the Subject 2923 DLC. Gunfire Games has clearly been listening to feedback concerning the annoying abundance of ads that often make boss fights a chore. Because the fights in Subject 2923 either lack them entirely, or deploy them more intelligently. Personally, I feel the bosses in Rysum are some of the best in the entire game, such as the Rider and his warg that I encountered as a world boss. Not a single ad was spawned, but I had my hands more than full dodging both the rider's leaps and frost a few strikes, and the work's burrowing assaults and frost breath. It was an exhilarating encounter that struck the perfect balance between challenge and spectacle, and set the overall tone for Subject 2923's boss battles. The story itself that carries players through the new campaign can best be described as meh. The new characters are all shuffled on and off stage rather rapidly, and one character's demeanor and motivation shift wildly within a 3 minute time span with the loosest of justifications. It's serviceable, and does bring the story of Remnant to a close, but even at 5 hours to complete, I'd have liked a little more time with these characters, if only to make certain story beats more impactful. The door is somewhat left open at the end for a possible sequel, but those here for strictly the narrative will find the rushed conclusion a touch lackluster. Of course, Remnant from the Ashes isn't a plot-first type of game. Players have spent the last year digging up every conceivable secret Gunfire Games has buried within the various biomes, and Rysum is not lacking in this regard. There are new armors, weapons, accessories, and traits to unearth. 
Repeat runs are as necessary here as they are elsewhere in the game, and Rysum's inclusion in Adventure Mode is a welcome addition. There's plenty to see and find here, and puzzles that will require repeat attempts to crack. Subject 2923 may not deliver the best story out there, but it nails Remnant's core loop with a blom. The cherry on top is the sweeping balance changes that are tied to the Subject 2923 patch, which are included for all. Rather than nerf any overperforming equipment or traits into the ground because it didn't meet their vision, they've opted to instead first try and buff up the weaker aspects to match. Gunfire has gone out of their way to bolster as many viable builds as possible during Remnant's life cycle, and the tweaks that come with this DLC are no different. Not everything will be perfect, but I'd love to see more developers adopt Gunfire's approach to balancing and addressing fan feedback in the future. A quick note on performance, by and large nothing has changed with Remnant from the Ashes with Subject 2923. The new zones are comparable to the existing zones in terms of frame rate and graphics, though I experienced frequent crashing no matter where I was at in Remnant. Almost every hour my game would freeze and could only be closed via the Task Manager. This issue is remarkably annoying considering Remnant from the Ashes uses a Dark Souls-esque bonfire system, so a freeze in the middle of a dungeon was no different than death. Hopefully Gunfire can address the issue shortly after launch, but expect the game as a whole to be unstable. As a conclusion to Remnant from the Ashes narrative, Subject 2923 is mediocre, but the DLC more than makes up for this fall by introducing a wealth of lore for purists, a solid new biome with a fantastic variety of secrets to discover, and exceptional new boss battles. Balancing has never been better, and players who own every DLC will find Remnant is in the greatest shape it's ever been in. Constant crashes and freezing bring the overall experience down, but once the issue is squashed, Subject 2923 is easily a must-buy for fans of Remnant from the Ashes. Even without the course's DLC, Subject 2923 provides dozens of hours of entertainment, and acts as a fitting end to Remnant from the Ashes. The story may not be the greatest, yet Subject 2923 manages to conclude Remnant with a bang, not a whimper.